Squeezera initially started as a mobile espresso bar that existed to provide the high quality coffee experience straight to your office or venue. But as 2020 rolled around and the global pandemic hit, our business model suffered very, yeah, a lot of contracts of ours started getting canceled left and right and we had to iterate in order to survive. Um, so during the summer months, we moved to an online sales model where we were selling coffee subscriptions and coffee boxes to be able to fund food relief to communities that were severely affected by economic fallout of COVID-19 in Rwanda. And near the end of last summer, we had an opportunity to start working with an organization known as Rocket Town. So Rocket Town was founded by contemporary Christian music artist Michael W. Smith, and their mission and vision is to bring hope to the next generation through Christ's love. And they do that through their facility. So Rocket Town has a large event venue, and they also have a Sixth Avenue skate park exists inside of their space, and they have um, a recording studio and offices, so it's a really cool collective working place. And their facility was shut down because they were not having any events last year, and it gave us an opportunity to work with them to have a contract to be able to build out our first brick and mortar store inside of their business. So within the last year, we were able to go from a cart to being able to build this beautiful cafe. So we launched the shop at the end of, in, end of October of last year, and it has been so special to see um, our business move from a cart to having a space like this. Now, you, Rocket Town, as an organization, has this incredible growth plan over the next five years to be in 10 major cities. They're looking at Texas next year, uh, New Orleans, Atlanta, and eventually moving to some of the larger cities like Los Angeles, Chicago, Manhattan. And Quizera has a contract with them that gives us right of first refusal. So every time they open up a new location in these cities, we get to come alongside them and build out our space and have our shop there. And we'll be in city centers. Currently, we're located on 4th Avenue South near downtown. So we get great traffic from the hotels down there, as well as the captive market of the events that they host. So it's been a really great partnership for us. So last time I was pitching in this room, one of the big goals that we had over the year was to put together a team of people that would really help take this vision to the next level. And I'm so excited to say that we have been able to do that. William Robertson, who was pitching today, has played a crucial role as our operations manager um, and helped this opportunity come to life. We have people such as Trey Dexter who have managed two very prominent cafes in the city working with us. And the rest of our team has a collective industry experience of over 20 years and are some really great people that are gonna make this growth happen. So when you look at what most cafes cost to start up, it's anywhere between 150 to $200,000. I believe that that is way too much money. I have started two shops and I've been able to do each of them for less than $100,000. We were able to put that space together for 40 grand. And you saw, it was beautiful, it looked great. The majority of that was the equipment, some of it was the build out and renovations. There was a little bit of initial staffing costs and we had some working capital in there as well. So we were able to work with very little to create something that has been incredible for us. So I wanna take a second to educate you guys on what the coffee supply chain looks like because there's a lot of pieces here and the cafe is just a very small component of it. But it begins at the producer, the farmer, countries like Rwanda where 80% of their exports are green coffee. And those producers form cooperatives. And those cooperatives come together to sell larger amounts of cherries to intermediaries that help connect them to exporters. And then those exporters take it to importers and distribute it to roasters across the world and ultimately in cafes and then to the end consumer. There's a lot of steps in this process. And it's crazy because on this side, getting closer to the consumer is where a majority of the money is made. And the producer gets the, just, it's really bad. So the National Agriculture and Export Board set a price floor for green coffee at one kilogram for 26 cents for the farmer. That one kilogram will be sold in the US in cafes for almost $50. There's a massive gap. And this is a problem that we feel like we are in a position to be able to solve. And we've made some major steps towards that. Last year, not only did we launch our first cafe, but I also purchased a coffee farm in central Rwanda. We have 10 acres and over 800 mature trees that will be ready to be harvested. And we have a built-in distribution network with the cafes that we will be launching. So we're gonna be able to solve an incredible problem and create vertical integration within our supply chain. We will have full control from the farm level over the quality of the cherries, how much we get to pay the farmer, which will be way above fair market prices, to the coffee shops that are gonna be selling them. And that's gonna cause us to be able to take the money from those coffee sales, put it back into being able to scale 
our green coffee production, increasing quality, and helping to develop the communities that are involved in that process. And we are so excited about that. So Quizera means hope and belief. And above all, we believe that coffee can be used to bring about greater change in this world. And this business really exists to help do that. We want to do that through doing business itself. We also have some really key partnerships, Rocket Town being one of them. Um, we work with Peace House, which is a transitional home in the capital city of Rwanda that works with ladies that have been affected by the human trafficking industry and has transitional programs to bring them back into society. And we recently have started working with Flint Global. And Flint has a mission to help double household incomes in impoverished communities all across the world. Currently, they're doing projects in Uganda, India, Tanzania, Sierra Leone, Spanish America, and soon to be Rwanda. And we're going to use our cafes to give what they're doing a platform and be able to support them once our revenues allow it. So having a brick and mortar store has been a game changer for us. You see our sales. This is when we were just doing some bookings and selling some coffee online. Since launching at the end of October, we've really been able to up our revenue. And within the last two months, with Nashville starting to reopen, we've experienced at least 30% growth. And we're on track to probably do over 100,000 this year, and hopefully next year, 250. So what I have presented to you is such a unique business model, because it positions Quizera to be in a place where we have such a diverse amount of revenue streams, from the farm itself, to the coffee shops we'll be opening, to the green coffee sales that we will use and sell to roasters all around the world, to the online coffee sales and subscriptions, to other products such as coffee flower honey and macadamias, which we grow on our farm to provide shading for the cherries, but increase the agricultural value of the farm by 150%, and we can sell those to um, wholesalers such as Whole Foods. Uh, we still have the carts, and we're starting to be booked for weddings and events here in the city, and that's also still something that can be scalable. And our company can provide training. I'm SCA certified. We can have companies pay us to help work with their staff to train them, and even have coffee courses for consumers. So all of this to just show you, it is incredible how in two years we have gone from a coffee company that was running out of a dorm room here at Lipscomb, working with the College of Business, to a business that is now positioned to be able to scale across the United States and impact thousands of people. I want to show you guys a picture that is very special to me and kind of shows you just how long this journey has been. This is me in 2013 hugging the first bags of coffee that I ever sold. This company truly has been eight years in the making. This is me last year with some of our coffee boxes that we were selling online. I just want to show you the dedication that has gone into this business. And I'm so excited that we're now in a position to truly be able to impact people. In a year like 2020, where many were losing their jobs, we were able to sustain at least 30 people on our payroll internationally. And I believe that that is a huge means of hope creation. So what is it that we need? Currently, our revenue streams are starting to grow, but we're just meeting our staffing costs, and there's not much margin. In two months, our coffee will be ready to be harvested. And we need to be able to pay for a shipment of green from Rwanda land transported to Dar es Salaam and then coming to the United States. And that cost is going to be around 8500 to be able to make that happen. So I just want to thank you guys so much for taking time to listen to what it is we're doing. And I hope that you're excited about this as I am and that you want to be a part of supporting this. Thank you so much.